The United States of America is the most successful nation the world has ever known. And I think that's largely because we're the freest nation. Humans cannot reach their potential, cannot realize their dreams unless they're free. If prosperity were easy, everybody around the world would be prosperous. If freedom were easy, everybody around the world would be free. If security were easy, everybody around the world would be secure. They are not. None of this is going to be easy. But this is the United States of America. It takes an extraordinary effort. It takes extraordinary commitment. It takes extraordinary strength. The Valley Forge wasn't easy. Going to the moon wasn't easy. Settling the West wasn't easy. We are the American people. We have seen difficulties before and we always overcome them. This is about rolling up our sleeves. I mean, we might have some differences, but at Americans putting our head down and getting it done. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. It is a Monday. We are we're just man, we're gonna jump right to it. It's it's we're ready to go. Um we get this going. All right, let me introduce the Godfather, conservative radio Hodge Bailey Jr. Hello, everybody. Just glad to be here as usual. And we also got Mr. Jason Robinson. What's up, Jay? Hey, 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 top of the morning, everybody. Happy Monday, fellow listless vessels. Don't forget to like, comment, and share the Wayne Dupree podcast. Man, to hell with Ron DeSantis. Um, Hillary DeSantis. <laughs> Can you see that video? We're going to play it a little bit later. <laughs> right now, my heart is all right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yep, yeah, that, that, that's it right there. That, look, I was it's, like, that's wrong. It's that, wartime. That, it's wartime. Whoever whoever did that video is just wrong. It, <laughs> yeah. They just wrong for doing that. We'll show can, you that video in just, just, just can, a Can I ask you guys a question? Before this weekend, have you ever used the word listless in conversation? Uh, no. I'm gonna say I'm 49 years old. I don't think I've ever used that word. I think I think where he was going was shiftless, but you know, you know what comes after that. So he didn't want to do that. So I mean lifless. Uh, last time I used listless, I was trying to pronounce bifurcate. <laughs> right. I even spelled it wrong. I even spelled listless. Yes. <laughs> because I never. <laughs> I was like, okay, you want to make up a word? I'll make up a word. I mean, I don't know. L- lifless. Somebody in the comments like, what the hell is lifless? Oh, that's right. <laughs> I was going to say what I. I, I kind of unplugged a little bit on Saturday and Sunday when I saw that. I'm like, who the hell even uses that word? Can you at least yeah. insult us with a word that we don't have to you look know, up? I think the coolest thing that happened over the weekend, Wayne, you used to always get mad <clears throat> about RNC types sending you stuff with Trump's name on it. Yeah. And, and Trump came out with the master move, man. I mean, the he made a seal of approval that by law has to be on anything coming that's from good. his campaign that's that's, that's war that's, that's war with the, between that and not going to the debates and now he says all the debates you know yep. what when i read when i read the end of that that's the first thing to hit my mind i was like he just said <laughs> it, it was like he just said he ain't going no debates you know he ain't going and, to none and that's war with the yeah. rnc yeah. and you're going to so see it is. open it is. hostility yeah. now yeah. you've already started to see it with Senator yeah. Cassidy and a bunch of the I rest of them, yeah, this is going to be open hostility toward us by the party. Yeah. Guaranteed. I think, I think what's going to happen 
is that the RNC is going to follow through with what they did in 2016 and say, okay, well, if you don't want to debate with the rest of the candidates for the RNC, then you cannot be on the ballot as a Republican candidate. Okay. Right, right, Fair right. Enough. Okay. Okay. But I think I think that's the way they're going to go because you got... You, you, These people are and, stupid. And, you know what? And I thought about it yesterday. I was like, you know what? He has 40, 50, 60 points in some polls up on these people. And y'all are and y'all are you're gonna continue with the debate? That's just a money grabber, y'all. That I mean that's that's all that is. That's this fundraising. Ruin, that's this that's could it. ruin the Republican Party. It could, it could ruin its brand. Just like you Bud don't Light. need the debate. You don't need the debate. Nope. You need to call you, you need to drop rug and say, okay, we're sorry. We're going to let's do this and defeat Joe Biden because you, um, Jason, you said something last week. And I think I kind of came in at the same time or came in behind you. But Joe's going to get 85 million votes. Yep. Mm -hmm. He's not going to get 81. He's going he gonna to get 85. Yeah, maybe 90, somewhere like that. Yeah. We need to be in mass this time. Right. I mean, I mean, for, I forget that. We, hey, hey, vote however you need to, but it needs to be in mass. And I don't want to hear nothing about anything like that. I, no, we need to vote and vote and vote. That's how this needs to come down. Um, uh, well, here's the other interesting thing: is they're trying to. So what they're trying to do is eliminate the Republican that has the best chance of beating Joe Biden or whoever the candidate is when they take out Joe Biden. And right now there's other candidates. So I don't think Americans are fully waking up to the fact that they're trying to take out the front runner because some people, you know, the establishment wing is still like, oh, maybe you're on DeSantis or whatever. But if everybody dropped out and just supported President Trump and said, we're all in on Trump and <clears throat> quit with all this nonsense with these debates that nobody's going to win, then when they go after Trump, it's you're trying to take out the Republican nominee for president. It's an entirely different feel to America. And I think then you even get Democrats saying, hey, wait a second. Like, this is this is not OK. But because there's other options, I don't think it's hit everybody yet. Well, they did the same thing on the Democrat side, though. I mean, they're not doing any debates. Right. Or on uh, Joe Biden. And they're like, oh, uh, well, mm. Yes, there are Democratic candidates out there running for president right now. Marianne Williamson, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. There are candidates, y'all. There are other people. They just don't want you to know about it. Right. And that's and that's and that's what Dems have been doing, or Dems have been trying to do, uh, and Republicans have been trying to do that for, um, um, for years too. We tell you who is the front runner. We're gonna tell you who, and y'all go for that. Uh, and Watching, watching what Ron DeSantis had to I say. I think that we, we, we have a strand in our in our party that views supporting Trump as whether you are um, a, a rhino or not. And so you could be the most conservative person since sliced bread. Unless you're kissing his rear end, they will somehow call you a rhino. So it's been totally detached from principle and what you actually believe and results. And it's more about you know, just what faction you happen to do. So there'll be people uh, who are huge Trump supporters, like in Congress, who have like incredibly liberal left-wing records that that's really just atrocious. And yet they're viewed as by, by some of these folks as like, as like really, really good. Then you have other people, you know, like a Congressman Chip Roy, who's endorsed me, Congressman Thomas Massey. These guys have records of principle fighting this. So if they, for you, you're right. If they're for Trump, they're liftless, lifeless, shiftless, whatever. Okay. Got liftless, uh, listless. Listless. Listless wrestles. Okay. Oh, and, and oh, and by the way, I guess we're kissing Trump. I mean, I, I guess. Uh, on See, these they're, missing, they're missing the most important part. There's a paradigm shift. Forget Democrats and Republicans. Americans have figured out you two suckers are working with each other. We exactly. figured it out. We never knew that before. Right. We figured it out. I mean, some of us did, but not me. <laughs> and we figured it out now. 
and nobody on that stage, if if they have that Republican, the, the first losers debate, and they don't, every one of them don't defend Trump, they're the enemy, man. I mean, you can't yeah. sit here in the middle of what's going on in our country and our world and pretend it's not there. Right. You know, they're persecuting this guy right in front of us. There's a really, a really good article about we are the same as every other country that's ever had a revolution. It's the exact same. The people at the top, the ruling class, are trying to hold down the lid of a boiling pot. Instead of turning the temperature down, they're trying to hold the lid down. And they just do item after item after item taking our liberty away. And it's not going to end well for them or us. Something's yeah. going to happen. Well, and for years, average, everyday, blue-collar, hardworking Americans voted Republican because we couldn't vote Democrat. A lot of people. And the people in control of the Republican Party hate us. Yep. They don't want to stand up for you. They don't want to defend your values. They don't want to defend your, your principles. They don't want to do any of that. They just want to get in there, be the ruling class, and find more ways to screw over Americans if it enriches themselves. And Trump rose up and gave us a voice. He said, you folks don't need to put up with that. And it's becoming evident. And they're freaking out because they're like, these guys are serious. Like they're it's, really it's the first cool. time. It's the first time they couldn't beat it down. Right. People say this goes back to Reagan. No, it doesn't. It goes back to Barry Goldwater. Oh, Barry yeah. Goldwater yeah. started this, you know, and then Reagan came along and we got a little bit more. Then they beat us back down with George H. W. Bush and yeah. George W. Bush. I mean, this George is Bain, right. George W. Bush. Yeah. You know, and yeah. if you look at these yeah. debates, I mean, if you're Trump and you're way up and and whatnot, that. And, and you're taking the position that the establishment's corrupt and they're just trying to harm your campaign or whatnot. What good does it do to show up at this debate? None. It's going to be 12 people attacking President Trump with hosts that are attacking President Trump on a network that's attacking President Trump. Come on, guys. You're supposed to be on his go up. side. His numbers are going to go up after it's over. Well, yeah, but, but you know, what I'm saying is, all those yeah. folks shouldn't be attacking Trump. I agree. They should, I, yeah, they I, should be I, I trying, agree. if they want to run against him, say, here's my vision for making America That's great again. Yep. Yep. And yep. and get up there. But all you know, it's going to be Trump sucks, Trump sucks, yep. Trump sucks. Yep. We don't need to see it. Yep. And and this yep. is good. This is, I'm telling you, this is a defining moment for the Republican company. Right. It's going to do a Bud Light. I hope it does. I do. Because I think the Democrats, it's going to happen there too with RFK. Yeah, Won't give right. him Secret Service protection. What if he gets killed? He's a Kennedy. How does he not get Secret Service protection? I mean, the Democrats have to be looking at that, going, God protect him. I hope nothing happens to him. I really do. You know, I thought about it. I thought about it uh, um, yesterday when I was on uh, WCBM out of Baltimore, WCM AM talk radio, and uh, 4 o'clock every Sunday evening. It was uh, a great show. 4 o'clock. Sundays, yeah. Thank you, man. Um, uh, I thought I was like, if they get up there and they and they attack the guy why he's not there. First off, that's bullshit. That that's coward right that's there. You can't talk bullshit. to him through his face. You have to do it behind his back on TV. That's 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 a little gay to me. Okay. Um, secondly, um, if you can't stand in front of the American people like Jay just said. If you can't stand up there and tell them your vision, like, so because the moderators are going to push it. So um, Donald Trump said that he isn't going to do it. I don't care. This is what I want to do for the country. I right. want to do this and I want to do that. And I want to do that. Yes. But Donald Trump said, I know, but he's not here. So let's talk about what I want to, you know, okay. That's how it should go down. That's how it should go down. It's not going to go down like that because Brett bear and um, Supergirl is, um, going to be there to 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 draw out the anger and the Sanchez is going to fall for it because they're going to have a line in there to piss, piss little man Tate off and then you're going to have uh Asia Hutchinson who says I'm going to Donald Trump whether you're there or not Asia just made it I guess somebody gave three dollars and he made the stage you know uh you got Chris Christie how much, how much money do you think they're going to raise for Ukraine during that debate? <laughs> oh, I bet. I bet. I bet. And, oh, and then, well, oh, yeah, yeah. 
they coming out after Vivid. <laughs> I'm starting to see a whole lot of stuff, man. They coming out after him. I'm like, okay, I want to see how he handles it. But they, man, they coming out after your boy. They're going to get on him on this debate. Oh my God. Well, you know what? I, I don't know whether it's going to be this debate, but if it's not this debate, he, he, he got some interviews coming up where they're going to lay into him, boy. I mean, I just saw it just a while ago. And 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 you know you take it, you take it for what it, you take a lot it of it's it coming is. from the DeSantis camp, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but good God, I mean, somebody was holding some stuff out with well, this it's, stuff. It's not a very good idea to say that we should drop support for Israel. That's not Israel. No, idea. no, That's some dumb shit no. Right there. Yeah, no, you don't do that. You don't do that. Uh, just for practical then, matters. I mean, just with our, our, uh, we work together very closely on several defense items right. with Israel. <laughs> Jesus. I got to say, and, and, Vivek's a pretty smart guy, yeah. really well spoken and really eloquent. And mm -hmm. I hope they attack him since Trump's not there. Because if DeSantis comes after him, it, like, like Ron's got the surface talking points, but that's it. Vivek will just turn him into a pretzel. I've always felt, I, and, and 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 I've said it on the show. I've always felt that Vivek Vivek is going to mop up the debate if Trump's not there. He's oh, yeah. going to mop it up because he's the most articulate, probably of everybody that's up there. He's the most common sense of everybody that's up there. The only problem is, do got it. You know how some people have some skeletons in the closet. He got a little cemetery plot, it looks like. Oh, okay. yeah. I mean, I mean, he <laughs> and they're not Americans. <laughs> he had a little cemetery. I mean, you know, I was read. I don't even know how this came up. I don't even know how they just put him beside Barack Obama, but they were like, when the last time you had a young guy, great smile, articulate, man of color, crease of his pants is so perfect. Come out of nowhere. His account just started in 2020. You know, it's like, oh man, they man, they man, they picking on this dude, boy. And if there's one thing that I gotta tell him, because it seemed like we can't get him on here except for a pre-recorded thing. So maybe, maybe we may and I and I do have some questions for him. But um oh tomorrow, tomorrow we should have McGregor. McGregor will be on tomorrow. Colonel Douglas McGregor. Retired. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Our country, but, um, our choice dot com. But he uh he he's uh, uh uh I'm talking Vivek. Vivek, man, be careful what you say now. Cause you want to be part of it, you part of it now. That Israel thing, you if you had some Trump supporters, you you lost and then you said some stuff about Trump that um uh, I Thought I read yesterday, and then just a while ago, I just saw uh, that. Uh, let's see, Vivek Ramaswamy told allies he's running to sabotage Ron DeSantis' report. Now, I don't put anything past this through. It's a stupid, stupid ABC News report, but that's what's coming out. So all this stuff is going to be coming up during the debate. Now, y'all want to fight amongst each other? I might watch that. <laughs> I might watch that. I might watch. I might watch y'all make chicken soup out of each other, but when is it? that's just the Keebler Elves just fussing and arguing with each other. That's it. That's all. What day is it on? I don't even know, man. I, it's supposed <laughs> to be this week, I think. Yeah, I think it's yeah, the 24th. No, it Let me look it up. I heard Don Jr. and Kimberly Guilfoyle are going to be in the, in the audience. That, that's oh, really? I hope they're on the front row. Oh, I must be on the front row. I hope they're on the front row. Yeah. I'm, for real. And I and I still think Donald Trump should have. Man, I still think he should show up. Maybe he will. Sit on the front row, man. Maybe he will. Just sit on the front row. Oh yeah. With a with a with with with, with I don't know. Even though you don't well, smoke, some, one of those little. He should take them paddles like they use in the Olympics. Eight. <laughs> eight point <laughs> three. <8. 3. laughs> Oh my God, that would be epic! And look, and look, Rona, look. We knew on Friday that he was going to do something with Tucker. We knew on Friday. 
Mm-hmm. But Rona, but Rona, Rona's like, well, I hope I, I hold on to the last minute. Has I, former I mean, President Trump indicated his final decision to you yet? He has not shared his final decision. I think he's going to keep us all waiting until Monday night of next week. You know, the latest reporting from the New York Times, ABC News, is that he isn't going to attend and instead do uh, an interview with Tucker Carlson uh, on Twitter. Have you been given that indication from the campaign? I've read the New York Times story, but I have not been given that indication from the campaign. Of course, I hope he does the debate. I think this is the beginning, not just of the primary, but also the general election. I think it's critical that we get our message out and talk about how we're going to beat Joe Biden and what we're going to do for the American people. So I hope that he has. You know, uh, Botox, man. You have, I was going to say listless vessels, them lips. <laughs> Them lips are under What's pressure. With all this Botox crap. Under, under. Jesus. I can't all believe I you was, noticed that. That's all I was looking at. I be too. All I saw was two <laughs> balloons. <laughs> that and where where were we at from the guy? Were we at Buckingham Palace or what? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> the Republican oh, Party is really? such a show. It's it just totally remarkable. Anything, yeah. You know what? You know what else I was thinking when I heard that. You could take that same speech and use it for the last 10 elections from the RNC. Right. They say the same exact words. They don't even change the words. Yeah. I don't want to hear about principles anymore. Yeah. I want to hear about border walls. Right. Yeah. Did you see and, the Biden and, and, administration selling the border walls, by the way? <laughs> for cheap. I saw that. Yeah. yeah for cheap, real cheap. For way cheap. It's actually on, on a website, you can go buy pieces of the unbuilt border wall for like, I still like know a, where my brick a penny is. on the dollar, literally, is got, like what the cost. I got a brick. I got a brick somewhere around here. They were supposed right. to put it in the wall. Yep. <laughs> I mean, well, oh well. I Some know. of those people are in jail right now. But um, right. either way, um, uh, with her saying that she had been told, she knew. She went she and begged them. She, huh? She went in person to Mar Lago or what Bedminster and begged him to come on. Oh, week. begged him. I, I thought she said banged him. <laughs> <laughs> she might have like, took a what? shot. I don't think what? he's going for it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe before those lips, you know. <laughs> go, deflate, I like, go deflate them things. I was like, what Can you imagine you waking want? up next to that? <laughs> Stick her to the ceiling. Right. <laughs> My daughter, who is a nurse, just sent me a, just sent us a message in our little text saying we have our first case of malaria in Maryland. Please protect yourself with bug spray. Cover your skin. Mosquitoes carry them. She's a my daughter's a nurse. Really, congratulations! Yeah, yeah, that was she, fast. Yeah, she um she got um she registered with the state. So wow, congratulations! Yeah, yeah she's registered. With, That's a big now, deal. Now she's still going to. College though she's a junior this year, but she's registered and she's taking care of people and stuff like that. And Good. you know, so yeah. So yeah. she's gonna be like a nurse practitioner or something like that. Well, actually, I think I really think she wants to do that traveling nurse thing. Oh, that's she's gonna be an RN though. Yeah, that's yeah. hard. Yeah. That's hard school. Oh yeah, and hard, not only hard school, she has been in on the dean's list. Outstanding. Oh. I know a girl. I know a girl that failed that twice. Really? Yeah. But she was. I look at her notes. Was, she wasn't on the dean list, though. <laughs> <laughs> look, I I look at her notes. I was like, oh my god, how great! I mean, just you could write a book with this, and and I know they surprise you. They surprise. Yeah, you. yeah. But you know, she's. She's handling it all, and 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 the only thing that I could do for for is like I'm here. Whatever you need, I'll drop yeah. to make sure that you get what you need to get, and I'll listen to what you have to say for my health too. You know, I I trust you now because you know you in there. But yeah, she's 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 done good. Um, uh, we'll come back to the uh, left shiftless li- lifeless thing in just a few seconds. But uh, I hear Joe Biden might be taking a stand. Did y'all hear that? I heard something about it. I thought it was about the 
Oh, it was Hunter the lawyer. Biden. It was the lawyer. Hunter Biden's lawyer said it, as a matter yeah. of fact. Yeah. I tell you what, if you haven't read that political article, that article is incredible. Yeah. It uh it came out, it looks like on the 19th, and it was a bunch of releases from Hunter Biden's attorneys that talked about what they were <laughs> gonna do. He looks serious. I thought Wayne looked tired this morning. Right. <laughs> he was the graphics man. <laughs> oh my I god. Looks way and too young there. I know, I know. Well, you know what, too? Should have Let's not forget. Got a cigarette hanging out his mouth. Let's not forget. We got the Maverick who, um, like we said, said that he isn't going to show up in any debates. <laughs> Wayne the graphic man. <laughs> I was like, oh man, I'm having fun with this boy. I'm, I'm, I'm having fun. What? So, let's see. Wait a minute. She usually, she usually here. But now, nah, you know, we'll make sure. But uh, we, hey, by the way, we're, you know what? Um, we're broadcasting on Rare Voice Media Network. Please don't forget that. Uh, they had a space on Friday night. Amanda Milius. Do you remember Amanda Milius? She did that uh movie about um uh it was really about trump trump getting assassinated we did the tra she had a trailer for us back a few years ago and uh the and the movie's out now but uh she was in there and boy i can't wait to have her on the show but she she man she kept everybody riveted uh, with what happened out there in Las Vegas, you remember how? Again, a whole lot of people thought that all the the steel started in two twenty twenty and stuff, but we go back to two thousand sixteen with what happened in Pennsylvania and Arizona and Georgia. She talked about the stuff that was happening in Las Vegas in two thousand sixteen, and she tried to let him know something ain't right. Even though they won, they were like, "Look, just come to the party." The same thing they did to you in Pennsylvania about about you coming to the party after y'all, you know, after it was over. Yeah. They want her to come to the party. It's like, just come to the party. We won. It's like, yeah, all right. But something you write about this. And then four years later in 2020, they finally uh, 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 honed their skills in stealing or uh, doing something to, lost, um, to Nevada. And that's where we are right now. The signs are always there of what the Dems want to do. It just so happens that some of the things that they want to do against us right now, they've telegraphed. Well, no, there's no more telegraph. They're just telling us that. I mean, they're just coming right out and telling us and we're going, huh? So, and, and they're doing it with these, uh, um, with the Republicans. When it, the Republicans that are doing these um, things, uh, saying, uh, well, I'm drafting up this and resolution and this and that and stuff, and we're going to do this. I'm like, yeah, it's too late. It's Just late this way. How long How long has Congress been in session? Almost a year, right? Is it or, or, yeah. Since January. We right? still have political prisoners, and Kevin McCarthy hasn't released the tapes yet. Yeah. Where's Dr. Fauci? Where, where's the accountability of him? These people are in on it, man. It's all a yeah. show, man. We've been saying yeah. that. The Republican House guilty. is going to do nothing. Kevin McCarthy came out and said, look at all these great things we passed. They passed like six pieces of legislation that will go nowhere. That will That's do right, right. zero. Kevin That's McCarthy's no better than Nancy Pelosi. Right. That's what gets me, man. They they pat themselves on the back for passing legislation that's not going anywhere. We pass this. Okay. And it and and but you pass it knowing you knew that it's not gonna go anywhere. You know that. And even if it does go somewhere, the judges are going to ignore it. Yeah. Right. That, 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 this man, is, we're, we're heading off a cliff. We are. We, we are, uh, as a country, not just the politics, but this, yeah. this ruling class, when you look at the cultural things that are coming out almost every day with yeah. these new songs, new movies, and it's getting ready to blow, man. You know what? I, um, I posted this morning. I was like, again, on the show, here on the show, uh, 
we say, have y'all seen a protest against our government since 2020? Right. Yeah. The only the only protest that we can do that we can do in this country is on iTunes. And that's today. And that's crazy, right? That's crazy. That's the only way we can protest now is through song. And boycotts. Well, yeah, if we follow through, if we follow right. through with the boycott, you I mean, no Republicans some... showing up for a protest unless they want to get thrown in jail. I go and right. work right. the communist China, you know. Right. I go to a protest, it's going to be with a mask on, my fingerprints are going to be covered <laughs> up. I'll probably be a person of color, <laughs> right? <laughs> I ain't oh going to jail. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna bring out our sister in just a few seconds, Ayla. We uh Ayla Wang for the new federal state of China. We're gonna I look, I got a video. I'm gonna show her a video that just that I just came across. You know that social credit score thing and yeah. Oh, that's a thing. I just thought well, let's do this. Let let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we have our awesome, beautiful little sister to come on and talk to us. Uh trying to find the break. We'll be right Attention back. Americans, breaking news. Biden's dangerous plan for a digital dollar is underway. Don't be fooled. It won't benefit you. Take action now. The Federal Reserve phase deployment of FedNow began on July 1st, 2023. Be prepared. This may catch many off guard. Your hard-earned assets are in jeopardy. But there's a simple legal tax loophole to opt out of the digital dollar. Reach out to American Alternative Assets for a free wealth protection guide and discover how to safeguard your wealth with gold and silver IRAs against a failing dollar and volatile markets. Visit protectfrombiden.com. This invaluable guide provides precise steps to transfer your IRA or 401k into precious metals without any tax consequences. Be smart. Don't let Biden force you into using the government government's new digital dollar. Visit protectfrombiden.com to get your free guide and get started. Again, that's protectfrombiden.com. When I invented my pillow, my passion was to help each and every one of you. And 20 years later, all of your support is what keeps us going. Because of you, we've been able to create thousands of USA jobs and help millions get the best sleep ever. To thank you, my employees and I are bringing you a limited edition my pillow. The Giza Elegance My Pillow is made with my patented adjustable fill, the most amazing cotton, and a two-inch pipe gusset. It has four custom loft levels, machine washable and dryable, and you get my 60-day money-back guarantee and 10-year warranty. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary MyPillow queen size. Retails for $69.98, now only $19.98. That's right, get a queen size MyPillow for only $19.98. From all of us here at MyPillow, thanks America! All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. We have our awesome little sister, Ayla Wang of the New Federal state of china what's up little sis hi wayne hi jason hi hutch nice Hello. haircut by the way <laughs> you know what ayla i um even even before we start i want to play this for you uh because i just saw it on on um I, I just saw it on social media and i know that you've been talking about it here and there everywhere I want to get your um, your reaction. So the latest in this dystopian outrage that is now all of China apparently is I once again cannot buy food. A couple days ago, my uncle and my cousin helped me get a cell phone that is linked to a Chinese bank card so that I could buy anything. But now, apparently, it has been flagged for some reason and I have to pass facial recognition identity verification, which is insane because all I want to do is just spend my gift card balance on this debit card. The 
can't believe I'm doing this. I have to open my mouth. Oh my god. Terrifying. Oh. And of course, because it was my cousin who set this up for me, I did not pass verification. I guess it's a good thing that the Chinese app is not racist. But now, I once again can't buy anything. It's a new slavery. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. Alec, did you, can you, I mean, and some of the comments in that video was like, you know that's coming to America. Digital right. currency. That's it, right, Wayne. Uh, well, I, I think that, you know, for uh, for people who are not familiar with Chinese banking system, uh, it is very regular that the Chinese Communist Party uh, used the facial recognition in order to uh, to conduct verification on its bank owners. But the most stunning thing is that because of the, you know, uh, the, these kind of like KYC process that was posted on any of the Chinese, uh, you know, bank account holders, that basically Chinese Communist Party can utilize any of the policies to pause you from, uh, you know, being approved by this verification. Take for an example that during COVID times, that if you're, um, you know, if you're tested positive or, or, or if you are, you know, uh, being tested or being notified that you are getting in touch with someone who tests positive, they can simply block your verification on all social media platforms and 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 you know track your uh, footsteps and, and and track where you go and so that they can restrict your activities and restrict your financial transactions. This is very very common um, a, a, of a strategy that's coming from the Chinese Communist Party to oppose you know uh, their dissidents to oppose the people that they don't like. So it, it is for me, it is no wonder that, you know, that people are becoming aware of CCP's, you know, restrictions on people. Uh, but, you know, once again, that it has been very, very common and it almost, you know, touches the ground of the United States these days. Yeah, it looks like they've got it down to a science. That's for sure. And the thing that makes me the most nervous about this is a lot of people think with this, uh, banking technology that it's just a, a thing about well you can't spend money here you can't to me that's not the biggest thing the biggest thing is they track what you do spend and and when you have a a country that that's going forth with a conquest like the chinese communist party uh, they want us to fail and it seems like everything they do is geared toward us failing so you take the green new deal and now you start tracking how much gas people buy or how much their electric bill is, or, or things like that. It's it's like a slavery. They cut you off. You get $5 a month in gas, and that's it. And your card won't buy it anymore. How deeply do you think the Chinese Communist Party is involved in pushing that technology to over here? Or do you think it's just universal? Well, right. And, and I think that, you know, the Chinese Communist Party is good at utilizing technology to slave people. And, uh, you know, uh, Miles had stated the dream of the Chinese Communist Party in his broadcast. The first is to develop military power, produce missiles. Second was to enlarge, you know, the greater Bay Area and in Shenzhen City to replace Hong Kong and replace Macau and Taiwan. And the third one is to form the foundation for the modern world, which is advancing its technology, such as AI, quantum computing, blockchain, all these technologies, you know, by Chinese Communist Party were utilized, were, was utilized to destroy the United States. Mm -hmm. and, and, and these technologies were applied into some common tools that we currently use today. Say, for example, chat GPT, uh, that, you know, even Miles oh, had yeah. conducted a, an, an online broadcast a test with chat GPT that it shows that, you know, answers coming from simplified Chinese, traditional Chinese and English came with different results, especially on mm. Taiwan Falun Gong movement and any questions related to Miles and the new federal state of China. So, you know, by all means that the CCP mastered the tool 
to slave people, not to, you know, not just simplify tracking your transactions, going into your bank accounts and that they can subpoena the bank so that your account got closed uh, and, and the government can frozen your account, which, you know, happened quite common within the whistleblowers movement. The right, other thing right. is they can control what you saw. This is the problem with the propaganda that the open AI, the, the most popular AI tool currently is not open. It's open for CCP only. So th this is how the Chinese Communist Party utilized the advancing technology, right? And, and open AI is just one of the examples. You know, it, it's funny you say that because if you look at all the stuff that's going computerized, from cars to your credit cards to everything. And, and you see it in China, they just hit the button and you're done. And we saw it in the trucker convoy in Canada last year. It's it's crazy. Uh, but hey, I wanna switch back something we talked to Roy about on Thursday, which you guys are like Nostradamus because he was talking about the, <clears throat> the real estate market in China and spe uh, specifically uh, Evanglade, um, Evanglade, financial or Evanglade property that's the second largest uh, real estate company in America. And it was interesting because we were talking to Roy, we were kind of talking about it looks like their economy struggling. And then that night or the next morning, I saw I got the news update. I'm like, holy cow, they filed for bankruptcy. Like Roy needs to like start betting on real uh, betting on horses or something. But how big is this and how bad is this for the Communist Party of China? Well, I think that Evergrande Group, just like the other top 10 real estate market groups, they are the keys and the roots of the Chinese econ economies. So if the real estate market, you know, filed bankruptcy or went into a, a huge financial crisis in repaying the foreign debts, that means almost every single Chinese citizens, when you go to the bank and you try to withdraw your money, you probably would face problems. And this had happened to Chinese people, you know, years ago, that when one entrepreneur from a large group disappeared from the public and reported to be kidnapped or to be convicted by the Chinese Communist Party, uh, that, you know, in the banks, any banks that related to his business or the banks that he had kept a mortgage uh, previously would filed bankruptcy directly and people would be no longer be able to uh, get access to their funds and deposits into the bank. So if Evergrande, Conti Garden, and the other top 10 and over 70 real estate you know, groups in China filed a bankruptcy and or faced a you know, huge financial crisis, that means the Chinese economy is going into hell. And Oof. which also means that this crisis also impact the United States financial market because Evergrande had acquired hotels or, or investment projects overseas. And, mm. and this was all developed by, you know, CCP's top officials and elites in the past, right? And uh, the ultimate goal is to have it, have the United States economy tied with the CCP's real estate market that it can drag the U.S. economy into hell at any time because the real estate market in China was based on financial corruption, was based on internal transaction between CCP's groups, not by the deplorables of China, right? And, and, and the purpose for these elites to hold these real estate groups was to conduct money laundering uh, activities, was to defraud the Chinese deplorables, you know, bank accounts and, and, and their monies, was to uh, take away your pension funds from the United States. Their goals was not for, you know, a, a very normal citizen to purchase your own real estate and, and to live your life. So... You know, Evergrande is, you know, the CCP's version of Lehman Brothers. And, 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 you know, Man. imagine how that would impact both yeah. China and, and U.S. You know, now, does does the real estate situation, bankruptcy of that bank, would that play into China's uh, uh, military action against Taiwan? Because over here... Uh, when we don't have that much money or when the country is so, you know, when the country is so broke or whatnot, then they go to war because war, you, you get money when, you know, you military industrial complex or whatever you call it. Okay. But is that what China is going? Is that where China is going with the, with the uh, demise of that bank because I'm looking around with the Taiwan situation, the vice president who 
will will probably be president in January, came over here to the United States, which pissed up with which angered China, and China started doing military drills because of it. So with I guess my question again is the real estate situation. Is that pushing China faster toward military escalation with Taiwan, and they're using this this uh, this vice president's visit as also a part of it, you know, as to knock Taiwan down a little bit? Well, when I think absolutely, I think it faster CCP strategy of invading Taiwan, uh, but I think that you know th there are certain things that. Uh, for people who care about Taiwan needs to understand, when it comes to the potential invasion, Mao said that the first two things that the CCP would do was to destroy the communication systems and the electronic systems so that your military strategy or any of your plans, defense plans, would go into dark right away. Right. And, and, and I think that in Mao's understanding, Taiwan is facing challenges and confronting such an electronic warfare because the CCP, once again, believe that they are good at, you know, acquiring these technology from the United States and, and Russia in the past. However, a major difference between the PLA, between CCP's military and Taiwan or other countries, you know, national defense team is that over 50 percent of the PLA's members were utilized, wasted, or even con as victims of the political struggles internally and the internal corruptions, which means that, you know, less than 50% of the PLA members would have time to actually master the technologies to actually, mm. uh, you know, to actually be be able to have the same level of capacity when when it comes to a war so that right. for miles he believed that the major two problems that taiwan currently facing are you know the, the one major problem is the internal traders there are many many internal traders from taiwan who come you know who confirmed with the chinese communist party that they will surrender if the ccp launched a war to invade mm -hmm. Taiwan and even including, you know, many of the members in the in the Democratic Party of Taiwan. And, and that caused a problem because these internal traders even talked and cooperated and interacted with the Chinese Communist Party on a daily basis. And they even told, you know, the, the CCP's countermeasures to invade Taiwan. And they're mm -hmm. still they probably would still be current active politicians that people still see and watch and, and hear their speeches every day. This is the most concerning part of Taiwan. They have internal traders and which the United States should not rely on these internal traders. And I'll tell you, Ila, <clears throat> the Chinese Communist Party takes the long view because I've been looking at this next issue for almost 10 years. Uh, if you look at the South China Sea and the archipelagos, the different island groups that are there and what the Chinese Communist Party has done there in real estate, uh, it's pretty amazing. You've got one uh, set of islands, the Paracel Islands, that they've built a giant airstrip on. This is Taiwan claims to own this. Taiwan and Vietnam, they both claim to own these islands. And they've built, or they're building right now at a rapid rate, a long, heavy airstrip. And you can see what it's for. It's, it's for it to launch into Taiwan. I mean, this is something that they are moving forward with physically. Can you explain a little bit about what they've done with those islands. I, I think you're probably familiar with them uh, to the audience. Right. And I think that South China Sea is one of the key locations that the CCP planned on its invasion or military strategy against Taiwan. And, and you know, you were correct that every, you know, physical move that they made has a specific purpose, uh, especially for the Chinese Communist Party, that that I think that the United States should have a deeper look on military instructions that the Chinese Communist Party had built on Taiwan and uh, on on the South China Sea and and not only these islands, right? Uh, thinking of about the One Belt and and on One Road in initiatives, these countries who were involved in these projects, the Chinese Communist Party has also attempted efforts in building the military infrastructures, and these infra infrastructures served a great importance for the Chinese Communist Party to launch a potential wall against the West. And, and these infrastructures, including, you know, all the hotels or, or the construction projects in Cuba and South America, these all pose great 
you know, risks to mm -hmm. the national uh, security uh, of the United States. And, and I think that the Chinese Communist Party strategy and, and plan, it, it's a you know, it's 360 degrees. It's not just targeting Taiwan. It's not just targeting those, you know, Asia Pacific countries. It, it, it almost, you know, touches all the countries when it can. And it, and it builds infrastructures there. It, it builds the, the economic ties there. When you realize it, 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 it it's going to be too late. But the Chinese Communist Party would be a tiger, you know, would be a paper tiger if the United States start to act strong, start to act, you know, firm, and start to, you know, uh, uh, defund the Chinese Communist Party. Man, that's hopefully it doesn't come to that. And I think hopefully we see a lot of the economic collapse that will prevent us from going to war. Uh, since we've kind of got a real estate theme going, uh, last week it was announced Ken Griffith had persuaded the Florida legislature to modify a law. And from what I understand, the law in its first thing was basically if you're a Chinese citizen, you can't buy property in Florida. And then he applied pressure. He's also a big Governor DeSantis supporter that says, OK, a Chinese citizen can, but not just a member of the CCP, if I'm understanding how the legislation changed correctly. But this is, in my opinion, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this is just to allow basically people from the CCP to buy land in Florida. They just do it through a middleman or an intermediary. Do I have that wrong or? Well, I, I think you were absolutely right. I think that when the legislator uh, was trying to, uh, you know, uh, make some efforts, it should not target primarily on Chinese people. It should target on its means that the Chinese Communist Party used at most. That you were correct, you know, all of these acquisition of lands or acquisition of real estate projects, especially for the CCP elites, they've never used their own real name to uh, to acquire these assets. And, you know, they've used their agents, they, they've used their middlemen, they've used, you know, their agents business and the cover by cover, layer by layer. So when you build, you know, such a legislation that targets Chinese people only, it only prevents the Chinese deplorables of acquiring assets within the United States. It probably won't cause the actual harm to the CCP. So I think that the major, you know, difference in line here is that the Chinese people is not threats to the United States. The real threat coming from the Chinese Communist Party and its affiliates uh, in its economic ties, in its military ties, and uh, you know, in 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 their uh, hidden networks of these agents, they are the real risks and real uh, threats to the United States. Any of the legislation should target the Chinese Communist Party more precisely, rather than put the Chinese people on on a vague sense. Well, I tell you what, um, ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking to Ayla, Ayla Wang of the new federal state of China. Um, and we have her on every Monday because she damn sure gives us an update of what is going on in um, uh, uh, overseas. And, and I, I, like we say every week, uh, well, we, we appreciate you and um, um, the information that you give us. And if, uh, I don't know if, if any of y'all don't have any more questions, if anybody out there has a question for Ayla, you can always email us at wayne at waynedupree.com and we will ask her these questions, you know, because there might be something that you might want to know. And, you know, we, we want to make sure that, uh, especially if you are trying to uh, wake up or inform or educate people living around you and your family, you want the right information. And sometimes when we talk about it, we can only give you the top level. We can, well, actually, we can give you the flour. We can give you the sugar. We can give you the flour. And, but the cream and the cream and the, and the icing is what Ayla comes through and she finishes up and makes it all pretty and gives you all the information. So, uh, Ayla, thank you for joining us again today. Um, any last words before I let you go? Thank you, Wayne. And thank you so much for having me on a weekly basis. You know, we are always pleasured and honored to be on your program and talking about, you know, these topics that the CCP would not like us to talk about. Uh, well, I, I think that, you know, the new federal state of China's mission is to bring back the democracy and, and rule of law and take down the Chinese Communist Party. 
I believe, you know, that there are more, you know, Chinese people supporting the whistleblowers movement and supporting the new federal state of China because they understand that, you know, under a Chinese Communist Party's tyranny regime, that the people will not be given a chance to survive. And, and this is, you know, why that women stopped, you know, choose to not to reproduce under such a society. And, and many of the younger generation choose to live abroad and, and, and started to speak against the CCP. So our, our mission is, has never been stopped and our efforts had never been stopped. But, you know, we will see and we will witness the collapse of the Chinese Communist Party. And if you want to, you know, hear us more about this movement, uh, understand more about Mr. Miles, please follow us on, you know, NFSC TV on Getter and NFSC TV uh, Speaks uh, on Getter as well. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, our little sister Ayla Wang. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Thank you. When I invented my pillow, my passion was to help each and every one of you. And 20 years later, all of your support is what keeps us going. Because of you, we've been able to create thousands of USA jobs and help millions get the best sleep ever. To thank you, my employees and I are bringing you a limited edition my pillow. The Giza Elegance My Pillow is made with my patented adjustable fill, the most amazing cotton, and a two-inch pipe gusset. It has four custom loft levels, machine washable and dryable, and you get my 60-day money-back guarantee and 10-year warranty. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary MyPillow queen size. Retails for $69.98, now only $19.98. That's right, get a queen size MyPillow for only $19.98. From all of us here at MyPillow, thanks America! We interrupt today's programming to bring unfortunate news. Biden's dangerous plan for a digital dollar is underway. Don't be fooled. It won't benefit you. So take action now. The Federal Reserve's phased deployment of FedNow began on July 1st, 2023. Be prepared. This may catch many off guard and put your hard-earned assets in jeopardy. But here's the good news. There's a simple legal tax loophole to opt out of the digital dollar. Speak to someone at American Alternative Assets for a free wealth protection guide and discover how to safeguard your wealth with gold and silver IRAs against a failing dollar and volatile markets. Dial 833, the number 2 USA Gold. Yes, call now, 833-287-2. This invaluable guide provides precise steps to transfer your IRA or 401k into precious metals without any tax consequences. Don't let Biden force you into using the government's new digital dollar. Call 833, the number two USA Gold. Yes, call now, 833-287-2465. Act swiftly, 833-287-2465. We are back here on the Ray Voice Media Network. My name is Wayne Dupree. We have the Godfather Conservative Radio, Mr. Hutch Bailey Jr. Glad to be here. And also Mr. Jason Robbins. What's up, Jay? Happy Monday, everybody. We uh, want to thank Ayla Wang of New Federal State of China for joining us just a few minutes ago. Um, that's a lot of information to break Did down. Guys, I want to, just before we move on, while we're still fresh here, I don't know if you guys caught something, but I, I never, ever even considered this. She said every physical move the CCP makes is toward taking over the country or another country or the world. Yeah. And she mentioned hotels in Cuba. Yeah. Think about that. They're barracks. Yeah. You fill the hotels up in Cuba with PLA soldiers, and they launch it's 90 miles to Florida. Yeah. Yep. yeah I, we almost I mean, went to war with Russia over that. Essentially, I was thinking about that though. Hotels as weapons. I'm like, why would a hotel be a weapon? And I was like, oh, duh, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Why do you think and they got police stations and are buying hotels in America? Wow. Yeah, that that. I mean, what what Russia couldn't do, China went ahead and did. I mean, and our generals are worried about white rage. Yeah. Well, no, they have the permission of our ruling class to do all the stuff we almost went to war with Russia over. That's they true. got paid off. Russia just didn't pay off the politicians. Let me let me add something to that. The military leadership is part 
of the whole thing of the deep state. Oh, right. They're totally mm -hmm. part of this. Yeah. The ruling class. It, yeah. It's yeah. funny you say that because kind of back to that Hunter Biden article we mentioned that came out this weekend. So on the one project Wayne mentioned where we do deep dives on stuff on the American Tribune news, we did a deep dive about all the stuff that the government knew when they impeached Trump for Ukraine. And we broke out what the FBI knew, the CIA knew, what the IRS knew. And they they had the laptop, all that stuff. And then they impeached Trump over the Ukraine phone call. And the whistleblower was Vindman, who was the one that did it. And now he's getting rich maintaining vehicles in Ukraine. And everybody doesn't see all these dots connecting. And, and they like, did the same thing in every one of these wars. Right. They did the same thing in Vietnam, same thing in Iraq, Afghanistan. Yeah, but I mean, it's funny. Trump's about to blow the lid off this whole Biden corruption thing. All the government knows that the questions he's asking are going to end poorly for them. So then they go after Trump and impeach him. And then the guy they put up to blow the whistle now on the back end, he's been given speeches in in Ukraine for a couple of years. And now he started a company and now he's getting rich off the war. Like just you like can't KBR, just like KBR and Cheney. Right. The exact same thing. I mean, they really, they really have gotten to the point where they need to silence Americans to get their, to, I guess, to finalize their plans in making America into slave, uh, into um, making Americans into slaves. Part two. They're going and to try it. They're going to try it next month with a new COVID variant. New COVID. Yeah, oh yeah. my gosh! Yeah. I am so not wearing a mask. Come on. We need to rebel against it this time. If we don't, well, it's over. Well, from what I've seen online, many people are saying that they aren't going to wear it. But that's what they say uh, now. That's what they said the first yeah, time. I mean, <laughs> yeah. No. Well. Yeah. Right. But I still think. I st <laughs> those photos and videos of New York with nobody on the street and uh, nobody on the street in California and nobody on the street in Texas and you seeing these things, I was like, I never thought that I would see that. I never yeah. thought that Americans would be locked down and stay locked down. I never, I mean, in, in the movies, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember watching uh, uh, Keanu Reeves coming out of the hotel on uh, Devil's Advocate. Nobody was on the street, and he's walking up the street, and it seemed like nobody's in New York. Okay, that's a movie. There was nobody on the street. Yep. They, I mean, they were taking pictures overseas, Italy, China, all these places. Nobody was. I was like, not in one time in my lifetime, probably any other time in this whole uh, time that this world has been here. Has everybody been locked down like that? And they did it. I think the worst did it. The, wor the worst trait of all of that, and something that we could really learn from, and if we could fix this, we'd be in good shape. We need to stop turning on each other. Yep. Yeah. That happened during the pandemic like I've never seen before. It's a playbook out of the Soviet Union. It's what they did in the communist world. They made people rat out their parents, for Christ's sake. They still do it. In North Korea, and they made us do that. And the only reason I know because I listen to a police radio all the time, and I'm listening to these people calling the government on other people for sitting outside. It's totally unbelievable that we turn on each other like that. But it, we got to stop that. We got to help each other. I tell you what, the the COVID thing. It, it's interesting. One of the things I've been working on is because it's kind of quiet with Congress out of session. So I've been going back and just looking at times in history and then reading articles and reviewing articles from there. So like like Terry Bauman in the chat's like, how do you know that, Terry? We've got well-sourced articles with links to the government documents and to the news reports at the time. Feel free to go check it out. Send me a DM. I'll send it to you. But it's interesting because I'm starting to go back and look at the COVID time frame. And you can go back on people's social media feeds or you can go back in the news articles and just if you read the articles from the first and, and I'll give everybody a mulligan, the first like 30, 60 days, we all thought we were going to die. And we I did. think that was I, I think that was reasonable. 
I was and then about two weeks, about two weeks I was in. Yeah. And you know, I'll even give it like 30 days or 60 days. Like I say, so, so you're, you're scaredy cat or whatnot. We don't have the stats, but it's 60 days in like the numbers were clear. If you're an old person, this is really dangerous. If you're not, it's not. And then you look at what happened for the next 18 months after that and how yeah. people continued behaving. It's like, yeah. wow, it's really terrifying to look at. And that's why I know, said that about the ruling class in the military. You listen to RFK and some of these other people, Wayne. The military was knee deep in this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, yeah. I mean, I mean they vaccinated all their people. They poisoned their own people. Right. You, you know that. You know that posse comitatus thing. Yeah. You know, I know it's. I, I know that's the only thing keeping our military from our streets. Yeah, don't count but on that one. I, I exactly. That's what I'm saying. You Ever know, since and, you brought that damn video of those paint guns. Yeah. Oh man, that was terrifying, but, man. Terrifying. Him up to see. Um, I mean, even if it was a national guard, to see mi the U.S. military vehicles driving down the street of America, a side street, yep. screaming at the people, telling the people to get inside the house. That's. I mean, that's. I was like, wow. And 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 again, that was nothing on the scale of um, the lockdown. But it was like a semi-lockdown because if you go back to what happened in Boston with the Boston uh, uh, bomber yeah, that, stuff, too. Yeah, that was crazy. They locked them down, too. And did you see? They locked the, them down. You remember that? I do. And the, and the thing that was amazing about it is it was pre-planned. Because right, the, right. Reason, the reason I say that is because you had you had departments from 25,000 different agencies all talking on the same frequency. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mm -hmm. happen. Think about that. You had the lockdown that we were talking about. I can't remember where it was, Michigan or whatever. Well, there was one for, for uh, Katrina. They had it. They had that one. And they've been putting it in place to see what they could do. Government, military, all, all of them are in it. Sure. And 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 then and and then on top of that, what happened with Boston is they took a they took a look at what the other lockdowns did and said, let's give the military um I know, let's give the police military gear. Yeah, yep. Let's give them uh uh Humvees. Let's oh, <laughs> you know, let's 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 give them uh Let's buy up all this ammunition and stuff and give the DHS and stuff like that. Oh, like, and they're so eager to do it. Face, huh? They're so eager to do it too. They're so yes, damn eager. Yeah. When the back when the G20 came to Pittsburgh, right? Mm -hmm. I worked for the Army Reserve. And they, they were planning this big thing. And they had National Guard 10 miles away, staged, ready to go if anything got real crazy. Never deployed mm -hmm. them, right? I had a, a repair shop, an army repair shop right next to me, and I saw all these Humvees lined up. And I went over to the shop, super, what's going on here? What's going on with these Humvees? Oh, they're getting ready to support the police in, in G20. I said, the hell they are. You get in front of that truck. You don't let these things out of here. You stay right here in front of that truck. And I went up uh -huh. to the general's office. I said, dude, you cannot do this. I didn't say dude. Right, you cannot right. do this. This is against the law. The only way those trucks, those are federal trucks. The only way those move into Pittsburgh is if the freaking FEMA says it's okay. You know, if the federal, if the, if the governor of the state of Pennsylvania contacts the, the defense department and the, the uh, president and says that he needs you to declare a national emergency, that's the only way these are leaving this yard. Unbelievable. People don't even what? know. Man. They were ready And to they telegraph this stuff too. So like for COVID, if you wonder if the government's lining up for COVID, what would the first thing you check be? You can go on the government spending websites and see what they're buying. And most people don't know, but you can go on. It's available online through government websites, not like some crazy 4chan, whatever site. Yeah. And they've started stockpiling. I The number, I, I was just kind of rough adding it up on the site, like about 40, $50 million worth of, COVID supplies. And I'll tell you where it's going to start because this is where the whistleblowers came from. It's going to start at the TSA. 
Yep. You're going to start seeing the TSA masking up. And the next thing you're going to see is the Border Patrol masking up. Yep. Mm-hmm. Keep an eye on it, folks. And they have to. Well, not that they have to, but they they will have to. Yeah. They will have to. Oh, they're going to do Along the border, along the, uh, what else did you say? The T, um, TSA at the airports. Airports, right. along the borders, just like you said. Um, and they'll then lock the planes down right after that. Police. Police will be doing it. Teachers. Uh, and then you'll, it'll schools, be the teachers yeah. union and yep. schools will be one of the first. And then you'll get a Ooh. state or two like Gavin Newsom in Florida. That's Gavin. like, oh, God, we got to shut down. And I, yeah. I, you know, <laughs> and, and this is just like I said, every now before we were scared, some of us. And some of us were longer than others. There's still people out there, idiots wearing masks, but that's on them. I see that. I see, you I'm, know what? You're right about that. They're idiots. Total nasty. idiots. Disgusting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's disgusting. It totally is. But we know like now. It. We didn't know last time. We know now. I still, I go back to that guy forcing that lid down on that boiling pot. Yeah, you keep it up, man. You you, you go ahead and try to ruin another generation of our children. I right? just don't. I just don't see. And I said this a couple years ago. Uh, after we were coming on lockdown, I was like, I just don't see America allowing the government to lock them down ever again. I don't see it. It takes a lot From, to get us. It takes a lot to get know, us. But once they do, Wayne, once they get us, and once we're all in lockstep, it's over. It's We're just not going to do it. We're just not going to participate. I think we use the boiling frog analogy on this show. Where if you take a frog and you put it in a boiling pot and turn on the water and it starts heating up, the frog just sits there till it's cooked. Mm-hmm. The if you try to put a frog in a pot of boiling water, the frog jumps out. So it's can they slowly apply the pressure until you're too far gone, or is it such a dramatic leap? And I I think if they went to do another COVID lockdown, I think enough people would comply that it would be it would happen. Personally, I don't I don't think that's a flashpoint for Americans. I just I just don't see him. Maybe it's me being naive. I, I, I just don't see you Americans. Did. We all didn't see, see it coming the first no, time, like you know, America. I've seen huh? a lot more people being against it now than I did before, because I think before there was, well, a, there, was online, ounce, there was an ounce of possibility that it was true. Right. And started yeah. the last time. We were all, I was in my basement. I ain't going to lie. I was using hand cleaner and all that oh, stuff. Yeah. You know, not for long, but for a while. And I don't yeah. think it is. I, I don't think we're uh, <laughs> the same as we were then. Whether or not we'll comply, uh, the jury's out on that one to me. But I again, know. but again, it's like the airplane in the sky. You see it explode for the first time, you stand there. I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh man, it's going everywhere. Next time it happens, run. You know. So I mean, with this one, you know, if they attempt to lock it down, because if they do this, if they do this in an a election. year out from the election, yeah, the election, you're right. People have got to know there's something wrong, man. I mean that there's Talk about bull crap. Bull crap turns into bullshit when when that happens. Oh, okay. Y'all want to lock us down for for a year, or you want to at least put something in place where people can't vote unless they have uh their shot or wearing a mask. You can't sh- you you cannot walk into a voting booth without your mask. It some of these places need to, well, not need to, but they will probably put a law through that you can't walk into a voting booth without a mask on. You can fight about it. You can fuss about it. You can argue. You don't, you, well, sir, you don't have to vote. Well, well you're taking away my right. No, I'm not. You just well, have to what they do with that is they the, the people lose confidence in the elections. And once that happens, I mean, it's 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 all different if that happens. Yeah, 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 well, here's right. the here's the thing too. What's the overriding rule we always tell people to go back to? Follow the money. That's all. Like, if you want to learn one thing from the show, always follow the money. And 
if you look at the pharmaceutical earnings uh, that have been reported the last several quarters, they are suddenly not as spectacular as they were 12 months ago. Really? So big pharma's in on it. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, I mean, just look at the earnings report. They're public. Yeah, and it was interesting, too, when we talk about how people are starting to wake up. I had uh, masks do save lives if you're scuba diving or something. Yeah, or um, bank, bank robber. Yeah, I, <laughs> I had lunch with my buddy, my buddy Jim, who is the Democrat. <laughs> and on, on Saturday, he says, I just saw something, Jason. And this was startling. He says, did you know 75% of news advertising is a pharmaceutical company? I'm like, you got to be kidding me, Jim. <laughs> what, really? Like, I've only been saying that for years. Hold on, Jim. This portion of CBS This Morning, sponsored by Pfizer. Oh. Good Morning America is brought to you by Pfizer. Pfizer. CBS Health Watch, sponsored by Pfizer. Anderson Cooper 360, brought to you by Pfizer. ABC News Nightline, brought to you. By Pfizer. Making a difference. Brought to you by Pfizer. CNN Tonight. Brought to you by Pfizer. Early start. Brought to you by Pfizer. Friday night on Aaron Burnett out front. Brought to you by Pfizer. This week with George Stephanopoulos is brought to you by no, Pfizer. No. Today's countdown to the royal wedding is brought to you by Pfizer. And now a CBS Sports update brought to you by Pfizer. Meet the press. Data download. Brought to you by Pfizer. This portion of CBS This Morning sponsored by Pfizer. On how to find the hidden sugars in the American family diet. Sponsored by Pfizer. <laughs> We I officially probably won't be on YouTube or Facebook tomorrow. I know, <laughs> I know I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong, but that was funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm only laughing at Hutch. Um, <laughs> uh, I was only laughing at Hutch laughing. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, that, that video is true. Watch any news program, yeah. and when they go to commercial or at the end of the show, they um, always highlight one sponsor. And, you know, I wouldn't laugh. If it wasn't how they virtue signaled and tried to make me the brought the bad guy, there is literally guys out there like Jimmy Kimmel that said that we ought to be denied any medical treatment, any anything. Screw you, Jimmy. Have a nice. They did call. it too. They right. did it. They did it for some people. Oh, they they but, made people where they couldn't get transplants. But like the doctor that I was working with, he was like, "Can I ask you a question?" Yeah, sure. Why? Um, Oh, and and uh, hey, YouTube! I'm not I'm not gonna say the name because I know last time we got into this, I would, I said the name of the experiment and y'all shut my um, uh, thing shut down. Shut the channel down. Yeah, for a week. But I was like, I got my reasons. He was like, oh, okay, all right. Um, let's talk. Let's briefly talk about illegitimate elections. Um, you know how the Democrat. For me, I've always said the, the Democrats haven't gotten past 2020. I mean, um, 2000. They never got past that. And they start putting in hard efforts to make sure that that would never happen again. We, our, our side, decided, hey, we're in the White House. Everything's okay. Yeah, all right. The Dem Dems like, we ain't letting the uh, Supreme Court do this to, to us again. So, when they get on Donald Trump for saying, how can you say that the, uh, that the 2020 election was stolen? I can't believe it. You are hurting the election integrity. You are destroying this country. You need to be prosecuted. These people also started it way before Donald Trump. If bad actors tell us falsely that every election is stolen and that the only way an election is uh, trustworthy as if they come, come out on top of it, it maybe wounds us as a democracy and in a way that is hard to repair. Well, I think, you know, the truth matters. Uh, Democrats are saying this, this election in Georgia was stolen. Stacey Abrams, who is a real hero to me, the grace with which she met that defeat. This is not a speech of concession. If Stacey Abrams doesn't win in Georgia, they stole it. It's clear. I think that Stacey Abrams' election is being stolen from her. It was not a free and fair election. If she'd had a fair election, she already would have won. 
I think that there are lots of questions about its legitimacy. Trump knows he's an illegitimate president. For the sole purpose of artificially placing someone at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, they were successful. You can have the election stolen from you. So you have a lot of questions about the legitimacy of the election. I do. And Al Gore won that election. I think he won it anyway. We actually won the last presidential election, folks. They stole the last presidential election. Bush versus Gore. A court took away a presidency. Right-wing extremists already have a plan to literally steal the next presidential election. Well, I think, you know, the truth matters. Those two women sitting at that table this weekend, Clinton and Rachel Maddow, should both be in prison for the rest of their lives for what they've done to this country. Yep. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe that. I can't believe that woman's still, either one of them, are still free. The damage that they've done. I can't either. I mean, she went around the world. Yeah. For the first three years of Trump's campaign, I mean, Trump's time in office, she got in front of the camera and got in front of the people overseas and everything and told them that he was illegitimate. Uh, what's his name? The catch up guy, uh, Carrie. Carrie was doing, was doing, um, um, the uh, catch up guy. I love that. under, 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 uh, undercover ops in other <laughs> country making in plans Iran. and stuff. In a- and, he ain't even part of the administration. He was giving them promises and stuff. It's crazy. You know? Come on, y'all. And I just I, can't I believe that we, we sit there and accept these scum. These people have no business walking around free and much less getting rich. Right. It's like they're, they're bad people. Well, and and the media, the media is know. completely complicit in this. And if it wasn't for the media not actually being media, they wouldn't allow this. I mean, like I was looking in the chats and I saw Larry's making a run. I think we found our new Carl. God love Larry on, on YouTube. (laughs) Uh, But, but Gene, this is like the dumbest comment I have ever seen. Where is the evidence on the Bidens and his sons? Evidence. So So as we're talking about, like Democrats claiming elections are stolen and, and all the evidence about the Bidens, like it's there. If you're just watching the news, you're not going to see it. Go watch C-SPAN, spend an afternoon in a congressional hearing. Like you'll, you'll, your mind will be blown and you're like, what the hell? And like right now when they're trying to prosecute Trump, cause he tried to overthrow an election. If that's the standard, then I want Hillary in jail. I want Maddow in jail. I and not just jail. I want them in Gitmo. Because they kept going. They did more than Trump did on January 6th because they I'm, disrupted his presidency Yeah, with that yeah. nonsense. I mean, if you really want to put somebody in jail for uh, for an election, then okay, then you go back for Barack Obama and what he did to Mitt Romney. I mean, and I, I ain't taking up for Romney, but I'm calling a spade a spade. You can't win 126 percent of a county and the other guy get nothing. You know what I'm saying? You can't do it. Yeah. You know, I think, I think the, I, the, the odds are way against that. I mean, but guess what? It, they allowed it to happen. I'll tell you what's going to get us no out challenges. of this. This is going to sound funny, but I'm going to tell you what's going to get us out of this as a nation. It's going to be Democrats. Democrats yep. are the ones because when I say about that guy holding the pot lid down and the, and the water is boiling, the reason it's boiling is because every single day, People wake up to what's going on. In other words, yesterday they believed in the lie, and today they finally figured out, wait a minute, this ain't right. And when you see that RFK doesn't get Secret Service protection and there's no debates on the Democrat side, there's going to be some people that get mad because once you've been fooled, you're pissed that you got fooled. Oh, yeah. And you you get angry. That's how I felt. Check this out. Of Trump rallies, I've talked to a lot of their supporters, and I can tell you right now, I'm calling it, right. Listless Vessels is going to be on a T-shirt. Yeah. And each, if it's not already on one bet. right now, um, what's the thing? Yeah, I think that's a safe bet. Uh, no, it, it's a terrible strategy, um, and it's so frustrating because Ron DeSantis has such a tremendous record to run on. He has such a – he has there's so much promise for him, but he is really failing – uh, like we have seen few politicians with so much going in their direction fail as badly as, as he is failing. 
Um, he's not he's not very good at politics. It's it's appearing. And if you the, and the biggest tell is when you go after the voters that you're supposed to win over and you attack them and you mock them. You know, we, we've seen Hillary Clinton tried it with the basket of deplorables, as you pointed out. Um, and it didn't work for her. And so he's coming up. Not only is he coming up with something, I don't even know what a listless vessel is, except that it's insulting. And it, the suggestion is that these people are not only all the things that Hillary Clinton thought they were, but they're also stupid and they're getting snookered. Trump voters are very. <laughs> Who is she? <laughs> I don't know, but that was probably like, it's, 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 it's. <laughs> <laughs> it's this. <laughs> well, and it's funny because you see it in all the DeSantis influencers too. Like they make fun of MAGA people, like we're some uneducated hillbillies. And don't get me wrong, there's a certain component of us, myself included, that are uneducated hillbillies. But we're also the people that fix your cars and you know fix your plumbing and do things that makes the country function. Oh, Wayne looks distracted. He's, he's going deep. I'm going to send y'all something. So after the show, then did y'all see what Georgia State Police did? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're getting ready to we're getting ready. To, let's see, we got about a couple minutes. Um, send this to Hutch, and I'll send it to Jason, and I'm going to play another video. Before we both on the Supreme Court and the courts of appeal than any Republican president in modern times, than any Republican president in modern times. Donald Trump wrote the art of the deal. He knows how to negotiate. He's a master negotiator. Trump instinctively is tough on China. The strong horse is who they respect. The president's a strong horse. And Donald Trump's credit, nobody else was really willing to talk about that until he came on the scene. And he's leading with purpose and with conviction. And President Trump has followed through on that. Donald Trump's gotten a heck of a lot done. Donald Trump's gotten a heck of a lot done. I think President Trump kept his word. Other presidents mm -hmm. have promised it, and they, they reneged on their promise. He kept his promise, but he said, we are going to deal with this one way or another. Just think of how big a mess this president inherited from Barack Obama. Yes, North Korea, Iran, ISIS caliphate, China on the move, Russia on the move, Syria in disarray. He inherited all of that. We've made a remarkable turnaround, and uh, I think he deserves credit. I'm not sure the Washington Post will ever give him credit. They hate Trump. They hate people associated with him, and they let that show time and time again. It's really, really troubling. Now, look, they're, they're not going to give him credit. This is all pre-cooked narratives. They have their anti-Trump narrative set. He's wow. over. He's wow. over. <laughs> got a couple more days in that debate, and then he's going to be over. They're still going to give go him. To be the, go back to be the governor of Wisconsin. They're still going to give Why him 50 to $100 million uh, dollars to keep riding or dying. Whatever. Yeah. Lead him out. Our, seriously, I had brought this up a few weeks ago that I think they're intentionally trying to run the worst campaign they could have run. Yeah. And every time he and like when I said it, I'm, I'm kind of like, I don't know if this is true. It kind of feels like that. And the more you see DeSantis campaign, the more you can go. Um, yeah, he's doing this on purpose. Yeah, we attracted Larry. Larry. I don't know how Larry found us. on Larry's YouTube. on crack. Larry, Larry, he is Larry. a very pleasant man. I can't wait to see Larry back tomorrow. Larry, he's got in. that green, that green on his little thing there. He must be. Is he a Muslim? Is it Larry? Muslim? No. Now he's hiding a picture of him and his sister. So, um, with um, you know, we'll 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 be back tomorrow. We gotta go. <laughs> Let, Larry, oh. Larry, Hopefully, Larry we're still sister. on YouTube tomorrow after the Pfizer video. And uh, Larry and his sister are gonna have um, goulash tonight for dinner. No, um, that's where I, I know who it is. Maybe it's Larry E. Oh. Maybe it's Larry Relief Factor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got to say, speaking of Larry Elder, I saw him on The Breakfast Club. <laughs> and he actually tried. He did an interview so he can prove he's running for president. God love he Larry did Elder. That. 
he did that to get on stage, dude. dude right. Dude. He, he hasn't qualified have... though yet. No, he hasn't qualified. He said, "Yeah, he ain't qualified." <laughs> That's funny, Larry E. I'm like, what now? I forgot. I forgot he was running. I don't. I don't even think he's so running. He. Yeah, yeah, Priya, I know, right? He was like, yeah. His account like, yeah. says you better go do an event so we can get this tax right off, Larry. He's like, oh shoot, let me go schedule a podcast. Nobody yeah. watched me. What a Charlemagne does. I'll go over there. Right. Yeah. Nobody even watched that show. You know, um, thanks for tuning in to the Wayne Dupree podcast along with Hutch Baylor Jr. and Jason Robinson. We're here 12 to 1 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Red Voice Media Network. Jason, give me your final thoughts. Uh, final thought. If you haven't figured it out, your government's corrupt and the media's in on it. Wake up, folks. The armed Hi. forces of Ukraine lost 31 vehicles in the battle for the village of Stormyorsk alone, including 23 mine-protected armored vehicles. Those are MRAPs, cost about a billion dollars, given to them by NATO countries, reports Julian Ropke of pro-war German newspaper Bild. We should ask Colonel McGregor about that tomorrow. Oh, we will. Yeah, yeah, because Zelensky is saying that um, that they're going that they are going to defeat Russia. And the United States is sending F 16s over to Denmark. Is I thought it was you. I mean, we sent them to Denmark, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, think- yeah, Colonel, Colonel McGregor on tomorrow. We, we got some questions for him, and you're gonna love him. We'll, we'll see you tomorrow.